Beyond simply taking the best parts of each take and pulling them together into a single comp take, say with vocals, comping and take lanes in Ableton Live 11 offer some really cool creative uses and opportunities as well. And so in today's video, I wanted to share with you some really interesting creative uses for take lanes to hopefully inspire you to implement them into your own creative practice. So first up, what are take lanes? Well, take lanes are effectively a way to store clips on a track inside of the arrangement view, whether that's an audio track or a MIDI track without them actually being audible. You can then use these take lanes to audition different takes of the same part, say with vocal, and then splice together the best parts of each take to create what's known as a comp take. And although it's designed for this specific way of working, like most things, take lanes can be used in a really creative way as well. First up, I want to show you a way you can use take lanes to create interesting drum patterns and loops using existing drum loops. So here in Ableton Live, I have this breaks track. And what I need to do first is add some take lanes to this track. To do this, I'm going to show my take lanes by right clicking on the track header, going to show take lanes, and then I'm going to do the same thing and insert a few take lanes. I'm going to right click and use the insert take lane option here, keyboard shortcut for which is option shift or alt shift and T, which is how I'm going to insert the rest of the take lanes. So click insert take lanes, then go option shift T to insert three more. So now I've got four different take lanes on this audio track. Next, I'm going to find four different drum loops. I've got four different breaks loaded up here. Click and drag them into the take lanes by holding down the command key to drop them vertically. And now we have these four different drum breaks loaded up into the take lanes on the breaks track. And you notice that if I play this, we can't hear them because we don't have anything actually on the track. They're all in the take lanes of the track. And so now what I can do here is just kind of randomly splice together different parts from these different loops. I'm going to switch to my draw tool by pressing the B key on my keyboard. And now I can select different parts of these different takes here. And you'll notice that they all jump up to the top when I've selected them. And this way I can kind of splice together different parts of these loops to create an entirely new loop. If I didn't like different parts of this, I could very easily just select a new section to splice up to the top here. I could even select really small or minute sections by turning off my grid or simply making it smaller to create some really interesting and much more uh, choppy breaks. You can then go in and manipulate each of these individual clips up here. Say if I wanted to transpose this particular clip up a few semitones and this particular clip down a few semitones. Maybe I wanted to transpose this one down a whole octave. And this is really useful because it doesn't actually affect the clips on the take lanes. Instead, these are copies of those take lane clips. You can also implement automation into the clips, different warp modes, etc., to create some really interesting and unique patterns. Once you've created a pattern you like, you can simply select the entirety of the loop, right click and consolidate into a new audio clip. Next, I want to show you a cool creative way you can use take lanes to create variations of MIDI clips. So here I've got a MIDI clip that's playing a fairly simple chord progression, and this MIDI track is being routed to another MIDI track that has a virtual instrument on it. In order to do this, I've simply got my MIDI track here, and then I've got my second track with the instrument on it. I've set the output from the MIDI track to go to this MIDI track with the instrument on it, and then I've set the monitoring mode of the track with the instrument on it to in. This way, it's constantly monitoring all of the MIDI input regardless of whether it's armed or not. On this MIDI track here, I also have an arpeggiator MIDI effect device, which is arpeggiating the notes of these chords so that they're playing one at a time. And this is what it sounds like. One cool thing about take lanes is that when we record over an existing clip on a track, it actually stores both clips as new take lanes. And so this way you can just keep infinitely recording, adding more and more take lanes, and then you've got a bunch of material to choose from. So here what I'm going to do is actually arm the instrument track for recording. And then I'm going to go back to the MIDI track here. And whilst I'm recording and playing, I'm just going to play around with the settings of the arpeggiator, maybe even add some more MIDI effects here. And on this MIDI track will be recorded the output of of the MIDI and then I can just choose different parts at random similarly to how I did with the loops. The cat 
And so now that I've recorded a bunch onto this MIDI track with the instrument on it, I can right click and show my take lanes. And now we can see all of those clips that I recorded as individual take lanes here. I'm gonna turn the monitoring mode on this track to off. And now I can simply select different parts of these clips on these take lanes like I did before to create an interesting pattern. You could do this recording for as long as you like. You could set up chains of randomly generating MIDI notes and then come back and choose the best ones after five, 10, 20 minutes or so. And this is a really cool way of generating new interesting material that's still in line with the existing material. By the way, if you're enjoying this video and learning a lot from it, I'd love to invite you to hit that subscribe and like button down below. I post a lot more videos like this on a fairly regular basis that help you understand music production tools and techniques and how to use them in creative ways. And if you wanna support me in continuing to make videos like this, I suggest you check out my buy me a coffee page where you can support me by buying me a coffee or just downloading some of the things that I put out, whether they're for free or paid downloads. I'll put a link to that in the description. Back to the video. The last creative use of take lens I wanna show you is basically combining the last two things that we've done by doing a sound design jam. Basically what a sound design jam is, is effectively just recording the output whilst you're playing around with creating different sounds. And then you've got a really long audio file to splice together to choose some cool parts from. So what I've got here is a bass track with an instrument on it and a bunch of effects, which I'm gonna play around with. And then this is being output to this bass sample track. So this time, instead of recording MIDI data, I'm actually recording audio data out to this sampling track. I also have a drum loop playing here, just a really simple halftime kind of drum loop so that I get some kind of context for the sounds that I'm trying to create. So all I'm gonna do is arm both this bass track and this bass sample track. And whilst this drum loop is playing, I'm gonna play some things on my keyboard, mess around with some of the sounds and effects right here and record the output onto this bass sample track and then choose the best parts later on like I did previously. And so once again, now that I've recorded a bunch of sounds, I'm gonna set this bass sample track here, monitor mode to off, show my take lanes. And now I can simply select the best parts of each take. I can even do this at random if I want here. I can turn off my grid to be even more specific and glitchy with this if I want to, and just select random little bits and pieces of this audio. And because it's audio, I don't need to worry about when the notes start like I did with MIDI. And now we have something really interesting to go over our cool little drum loop that we just had had before. That one was a little bit dodgy, but you can see how we could go back and simply just select some different parts right here, maybe select the different parts of the better takes that we want. And then we can end up with something really cool, really unique, and something that you might not be able to come up with otherwise. And so there are some interesting creative uses for take lanes. If you make anything cool from these techniques, let me know by commenting down below. If you'd like to learn some more cool sound design tips and tricks, check out this video right here. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.